Hey, Peter. <laughs> hey, what's up? Did you know that the notes don't matter? Well, I've heard this before. I've heard you say it. I feel like they do, but I understand why they don't. So let's, let's unpack this. Let's unpack it. Peter, let's unpack it like the like your uncle talking about the January 6th insurrection. Oh, wow. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm Adam Annis. <laughs> I'm Peter Martin. <laughs> and you're listening to the You'll Hear It podcast. I was not expecting that. Two pianists talking about music. Mostly. Mostly music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, you know, it's the holidays. It's we, the holidays time. We have fun. You know what? We I, have fun. I actually, uh, I'm very fortunate. I'm, can I give a little thanks? Please. First of all, thanks to our dear listeners. Our Big dear time. viewers. Big time. So grateful for you all. Yeah, yeah. Without you guys, we'd probably still be here, but it would be a fruitless endeavor, as yeah. we say. No, totally. Um, but no, I'm kind of grateful. I don't have any of that. I don't have any that I know of insurrectionist family members that I will be dining with over the Thanksgiving holiday, which well, is great because I, I know mean, that's like a thing, right? Oh, yeah. And here in Missouri, <laughs> I mean, there's a good chance, you know. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, I, I, I love this time of year, actually. I know there's some, you know, there's some problems <laughs> really? around. I mean, you know, Halloween's very spooky. It has a weird Halloween history. Was, I'm just getting over Halloween. And here oh, we my are. God. And, the Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, Christmas, Kwanzaa, yeah. Festivus. Oh my gosh, New up, Year's up, up upon us. Yeah, I, but you know what I love about all this? Wh- whatever, you know, drunk uncles aside, like I do love a meal with with friends and family. It's Absolutely. really and there's lots of them around this time. Yes, and so I am de- definitely grateful for that. I'm grateful, of course, for our dear listeners and for I'm grateful for Open Studio. Thanks, I for, am because we are a family here. I mean, you know, we're not a company; we're a family. No, <laughs> but it does. We we have daily, you know, uh, calls and sessions and Zoom calls with our with our our members every day so it does feel like a family you yes know? yeah big shout out to all the all the new open studio pro members oh my gosh uh, all the old so new many open yeah. members. we got a lot of members um yeah. and depending on when you hear this you can go to openstudiojazz.com to check out a lot of our holiday offerings big discounts and all that but that's not what we're really here to talk about we're here today. to celebrate an anniversary peter oh we are yeah it's the anniversary of a weird little video that open studio put out a year ago this week wow called why do i still suck that was a year ago it was a year ago this wow. week and it still holds true today. Well, I was. <laughs> People are asking that question still today, they, and they forever will be. For everything we've done at Open Studio, it's. It, but that's that's the beauty of this, right? What that's part of the, the joy of trying to do something that is joyful, is wonderful, but is difficult. Right? It is. Yeah, we're gonna ask those tough questions. Totally. It doesn't mean we're failing. It's like you got to get up above the clouds to look down and be like, wait, maybe I don't suck. Or at least I don't suck as much as I did a year ago. Absolutely. No, but but the so the the crux of the video is that you suck because you you don't work on your rhythm, right? You're right. just if you're focused too much on what you're playing and not how you're playing it, it's not going to sound very good. Yeah. And a lot of people, especially in sort of the online music education sphere, they yeah. only talk about what to play and not how to play it. So I wanted to like what in terms of like harmony yeah, and theory. Theory. So this this episode is going to be a lot about like how much theory do you actually need to know to sound good? Because right. I can argue not a lot. Right. You know, I way agree. less than you think you do. Yeah. And we spend somehow it's like an 80-20 rule. We somehow spend 80% of our time trying to get the right notes and right. 20% of the time thinking about how to play them. And we yeah. should flip that and that's what i was the argument i made with that video but there's one part of the video where i talk about how the notes don't matter right Mm -hmm. and this is was inspired by an instagram post i saw from our friend nicholas payton friend of the show nicholas payton uh, one of the great musicians of our time who posted a a a video of him short clip of him playing playing some ridiculously good sounding notes yeah and the caption was the notes don't matter and it was the way he was playing it the rhythm the, the swing that he was playing them with, the groove that he was the playing with them. and the swag. And the sound that he yeah. had, and yeah. the swagger, and yeah. the, the, the also the art, the idea behind it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The artistic swagger. How the artist, that? there's a lot of artistic swagger in that. So dude. is that the genesis to the title of, of the video? No, the title was, I was thinking about like, you know, what? Are, what I is mean, the, the subtitle, I should say. The subtitle of, that, of, of no, that totally, one yeah, I, I, I give oh, total I credit to, to Nicholas Payton nice. for that because, yeah, there was totally the inspiration. The, the why do I suck, still suck thing was like, what is the question that keeps coming up right. from people? And it's like, I know all this stuff. Why do I not sound good when right. I play it? And it's because you're kind of 80-20ing it the wrong way, mm-hmm. right? You're spending all this time about the content and not the process and the how you play it. And if I could just interject, I think part of that is folks go into this sort of understanding that. Yeah. You know, um, but you get sidetracked because 
It's like theory is a tough thing. It's shiny theory. It's shiny. Yeah, well, like you can dangle it in front like of you. The naming of it. Yeah. The written aspect. The the banter back and forth about it. Mm -hmm. Like the theory of how a tune is laid out. Like being able to explain it's one thing. Being able to hear it, I think, is super important. Yeah. Being able to name it. And to talk about it is not as important. But those things, it's it. Once you get into the weeds, it's hard to tell which is which, and it all becomes sort of theory. So we're not saying that like you don't need to deeply understand theory, but it's just there's a difference between understanding and talking about it. Well, I think. there's so we're we're not doing something that you that is to be explained using text or anything like that. Or, it would be like trying to it would be like understanding fully the degrees. Of Serena Williams' forehand, right? Like yeah. her, her the angle of her wrist, right. the angle of the racket to the ground, the uh, you know the miles per hour of the racket head speed, the angle of the entire swing all the way through. Right, you it's could a scientific explanation. You of. could memorize all of it so that it's the perfect forehand. That doesn't mean that you can go hit a forehand. In right. fact, it means the opposite. In fact, uh, I think it was Malcolm Gladwell's book Blink, where he talks about you know one. No, was it the inner game of tennis? It's the this great book called the inner game of tennis. Oh, yeah, I yeah. think it's me mentioned in Malcolm Gladwell's like. But anyway, uh, the in tennis instructor slash mindfulness guy talks yeah. about how like he had more success um, doing a silent lesson, showing people fifty of his forehands, and then mm. saying you do it like that, and then watching him hit fifty forehands, than him explaining yeah. what a forehand is. So I think that's where. The, the notes don't matter. Now, I've had a lot of pushback about the phrase, the notes don't matter. How just, can you let, say? Go ahead. Let me just stop you before you go, because I think that um, maybe the analogy from what you started with Serena Williams and you know being able to scientifically explain the angle. Yeah. So it's the difference between doing that, and that could be all be accurate. You know, you're lifting at a 70 degrees, then it's 71, and then the acceleration is this. Serena Williams doesn't know any of that. No. What she knows is exactly how it feels. Exactly. And, and that takes ball, doing it. Exactly. That takes doing it and repetition and then like experimentation and understanding. So she still does understand all the physics. It's just on a different level. She totally understands the yeah. physics, but she understands that she embodies them. She understands yeah. how they feel in their bot in her body. And it's just like it's the same mm -hmm. thing with the piano. You know, like the more time I spend with great pianists, like, yeah, like pianists are generally, I feel like pretty smart people because yeah. just there's a lot Geniuses. going on. Yeah. No, well, you know, more, <laughs> some more than others. But there's in general, you know, we're fairly curious about music theory and things because it's like right there. It's kind of interesting on yeah. our instrument. We can do it all. It's fun to do on the on the piano more than probably any other instrument. Right. Music theory and, and nerdy things like that. However, it's like every pianist, even the highest level, Jeffrey Keys or Fred Hirsch, you level pianists have, you know, they don't know everything about every bit of theory yeah. that even I know about, right? Or or your average musician who teaches at the college down the street might know some things that these guys don't know about, yeah. right? But they can embody it. They can play it. And so that was my point is like, you have to do it. You have to actually, the, the more you spend time playing basic stuff yeah. over reading about or trying to understand complicated stuff, you're going to be a better player. Absolutely. And I you know? think that it's still okay. What's, where some people get sidetracked with this is that they're like, oh, I don't need to understand it. You actually, or if I really understand it or can explain it, can talk about it, that means I can't play it. No, that's not true. Nah. But you just want to be able to play it, feel it, feel the stroke, you know, hear how it sounds and feels before you dive so deep into the explanation. There's nothing wrong with like the understanding and the science behind it. That's not going to make you, it's not going to take anything away, yeah. but it will if you approach it like that. Absolutely. You know, it's kind of like, if you understand what it means to conjugate a verb in English, there's a lot of people that can speak English very well and could not conjugate a, a, a verb like are, like to be, or I, actually I can't even do it. I'd have to really think about totally. it. Totally. But if, if you learn, had to learn the language with that science first, it would be really difficult. Now you can go back and learn that after after you're already fluent in the language, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I mean, actually, it happened to me today. We were in there. I was trying to figure out because we were going to add some notation to this another YouTube video uh, called that I'm a little follow up I'm doing to yours called the Why the Notes Sometimes Matter. Hey, yeah, 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 nice. No, but I was like, I'm playing this pedal point thing. Yeah. And then I go, I went to this. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Wait, yeah, what that's, is that? Um, and I'm looking at it. I was like, "What? Well, that's just like a uh, some kind of diminished," and I couldn't figure it out. I mean, and I still can't actually. Like, what I ended up calling it was like a B flat thirteen because the A flat and G, so it's B A flat B E G. 
over M. I was kind of like a B flat 13, sharp 11 flat 9, but I never would think about it like that. So it's like... But maybe it's like a G. I don't know. I don't, really don't know what that is, but I can play it. Yeah. And I know where it goes, you know. Yeah. If I learn what that is or learn one of the several ways to explain it, that's not going to take anything away from it. But it's not, nece it's not necessary, actually. Yeah, that's definitely... Ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is not is bliss. No, no, no. But that, that I mean, that's a perfect example. So another. I was actually. Could you tell me what that chord is? Do you know? <laughs> yeah. So that's functioning like a G seven. You're in the key of B flat. Is that right? Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you're and you're kind of going between. No, no. Like I'm a, in the key of B flat. Exactly. You're in the key of B flat. You're kind of going between like a one and a five. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like sus. a sus. Yeah. So this is functioning like a like a six chord. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. But yeah. I don't. I would never play that. You're much better at playing that than me. You know what I'm saying? So here's another reason why I say the notes don't matter is that I think some people, not everybody, but some people get so hung up on what are the right notes, oh, I don't want to play the wrong notes, that yeah. they, they ignore stuff like what you just did, where it's just like, that just sounds good. I don't need to know what that is. It doesn't right. matter if it's quote unquote right. I can just play it. Like that kind of freedom of trusting your ears and just yeah. being like, oh, no, this sounds great. I don't need to know what it is. Like, what is that? Like, so is it a thing? Do you think it's like if some people get so scared? Right. But do you think it's because they know it's wrong, then it starts to sound wrong, so they avoid it? Whereas if you just play it and trust your ears, is it that kind of thing? I think it's just that they think like, well, I need to just make sure that what I play is right, yeah. you know, and lined up with the theory or people are going to think I suck or something. But I'm saying like, free yourself of that. So this is but what's so you funny. you the butter notes or is it you, the Well, notes? you just missed like the bitter notes. your <laughs> intuition. Like it, you know, just remind yourself, all we're doing here is creating tension and then releasing yeah. that tension. So you don't have to know jack shit you can do whatever you want as long as it's tense and then you release it somewhere pretty right and that's all up to your artistic interpretation and what i tell people like especially when we talk about this on open studio pro or something we go in deep discussions about this is like now that the notes don't matter go have fun finding notes mm. you love now you're free to go explore the notes that you love right like the butter notes right? the butter note whatever that means to you bitter notes the bitter notes and if it's like oh i'm i find this person who writes about theory and it's really enlightening to me that's yeah. great that's your now now you're free to, to choose that and go explore that you're free you're free of this like this idea of whatever music theory or what people are telling you you should play just ditch it follow your heart follow your ear yeah you know what i mean even with stuff we say, like take it all with like, does not do I like what Peter just played? Maybe, yeah. maybe I don't, and that's okay. Like that's yeah, your. Yeah. Pro I mean, you know, everybody should love what Peter does. No, 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 no. But you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And I mean, I love like, it is really fun, uh, like with that chord to the. And I'm like, oh, that's what it. Now it makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to play it any better or any worse, but it is fun. Super fun it's to, not, to not discover. Yeah, exactly. That kind of stuff, and then right? to like. To, and it's really what it's kind of the scientific mind, maybe in terms of like, you don't have to understand that the earth revolves around the sun and the rate that it does it, the speed and all that to be able to, you know, be on a cycle where you're getting energy from the sun and then you're going to sleep and like all those things are going to happen anyway. But it is fun when you learn about that. It's like, wow. Yeah. And it's also kind of awe inspiring. It's like, totally. wow. And so for me, when I'm like that, I'm like, oh, now I see the logic because it's like one, five, six, two. I'm like, that's why it works. It was already working to the listener. Yeah. But now it is fun to kind of connect the dots, I think. And, what, what? and that's a great, I think, positive connection. It's, then you're not using theory as a crutch. No, you're not using theory to like learn stuff. You're losing, using it to explain sounds you already yeah. love. And just like, why you might, what? you might love a bottle of wine and then you get to go to the winery and see how it's produced and how they put some secret. Well, I guess you're not allowed to put secret sauce. Just let in, the magic you know. of the sounds yeah. stay there for a little bit. Right. So one more thing I'll say about this too, yeah. which is like a lot of some people will comment on stuff like, well, make sure that you're playing like, yeah, like, you know, play the correct notes, play the right notes. Right. I mean, yeah. I mean, just play Notes. Just play the right notes, notes, right? So, but this is even, yeah. I mean, like, like I said, just play the right notes, Peter. Don't you would never ever play like an E flat over a C major chord, right? Exactly. That would in no context yeah. ever sound good. That, that yeah. would that sounds horrible. Wait, that's not good. I know. Oh, well, what oh, about I see like what you do. if you're doing you're a C major? If you're doing a C major seven, why would you ever do a B flat? Or, you know, you're on a C major chord. Could you ever play a C sharp? That sounds terrible. Ah, right. oh, horrible. So wrong. That's what I'm saying. Literally all 12 notes can work over any chord you want. 
at I, any point. Why can't you get microtonal? You can get microtonal. Mono neon's getting microtonal, <laughs> and it sounds amazing. No, I'm serious. Like, I know. so like, you know, it's it's all about following your ear and understanding where. It's not just like what you play. That doesn't matter. It's how you play it and w- almost where you play it. Mm. You know what I mean? Right. Like how you play it and where you play it is much more important than what you play. Anything can work anywhere. You just have to know what you're doing. Awesome. And it has to sound good and you have to have swagger. We solved everything. So the moral of the story is the notes do matter. Exactly. Like, is that right? That's right. <laughs> exactly. The notes do matter. Until next time. You'll hear it. Notes don't matter. <laughs> Dripping in iron. Steamboat Springs, Colorado, currently. I'm in Indianapolis. Hey, how's it going, guys? Andrew, hi. Because I feel inspired to play something else from your play. Okay, okay, that's great. <laughs> I think using the metronome is a great tool, but it's not the only tool. All of the answers are really in the music. What does it mean to live in a groove, be in a groove? Until next time, happy practicing.